Hello everyone, welcome back to my video. Today I've got a scary video to share with you. It's me reacting to my first ever piece of code that I wrote. It's been a long time since I've looked at this code. It's been over eight years, so it's gonna be fun. So let's dive right into the video. Okay, so I'm reacting to my first ever coding video and I think it's one of the first few times I ever wrote some code. And this is in 2017, I believe. So this is seven years ago. So it's been a while. Um, I look a lot older now, but and my coding ability is a lot better. But hopefully we will pick apart what I did wrong. And maybe if you're just starting to code, maybe you can learn from some of my mistakes that I made previously. So let's get into the video. I'm building a tribute page is one of the tasks for the free code camp lessons that I was following. So let's get started. Hey guys, how's it going? What's up? Um, my day's gone pretty well. Went to yoga, just came back. Feeling good. Very confident and telling everyone about my day. I don't know, I don't know why that's relevant to this video, but. Um, today I want to do a quick tutorial on how to build a tribute page. I've been following the free code camp course. I've done all the, I've done all the responsive web design certificate, and I have. My microphone is terrible. Oh my god, I hate listening to myself, um, especially when it's a bad microphone. I think I was using the computer microphone at the time, and it's just it sounds terrible. Finished the web design projects, so I thought I'd give someone a hand who's currently building the tribute page and I hope to go through all the different projects in the future. So with the tribute page, let's look at the requirements. So my tribute page should have an element of course. So you have to build something similar to this. Um, I guess our design would be a bit different, but something somewhat similar. We won't do a yeah, timeline is a bit boring. I mean, you have to enter in each piece of text, you know, it could take a long time. So I definitely agree with that. I like how I'm breaking down the requirements for the project. That's a very important part of programming. And I think most people do it, but subconsciously, but you should always have in your mind that, okay, I need to break down what needs to be done into small actionable steps and then start solving each problem one by one. It's a really good way to do any project. Timeline. So the timeline is just a bit tedious. I don't want to keep it short for you guys. So let's um, let's choose someone first. I've really chosen my favorite author. His name is Jocko Willink. He's a former Navy SEAL. <laughs> Gangster. Um, yeah, I really like Jocko Willink. Even now, I love his uh, his book on leadership and taking responsibility for your actions. So I'm still a big fan of Jocko Willink now. I'm just an absolute gangster. I mean, he used to he used to be he used to I think it was in a, the Iraq War. Yeah, the Iraq War. He was like a head commando or something. And he wrote a book called um, Discipline Equals Freedom. And I really really enjoyed that book. And I took a, a lot away from it. So thank you, Jocko Winnick. You really helped me out a lot. Anyway, that's why I'm building this tribute page. So let's see what the first requirement is. Let's delete that. Okay, should I have an element with the corresponding ID main which contains all the other elements? Okay, so the first thing is, um, oh, it's taking so long just to enter a piece of code. But I guess I was just starting out, so I didn't know, you know, I didn't quite understand what everything meant, but that's fine, you know, you have to be patient when you're learning new things. Oh, let me see. So create div, div id equals main. So first up off the bat, ideally you want to avoid using divs where you can. You want to use syntax that has meaning. So a div doesn't have any meaning. It's not syntac syntactically meaningful. Ideally, I should use the main HTML tag. Now in 2024, we have a lot more tags available. So we should try and use tags which are significant. In this case, we can use the main tag instead of the div. That's one criticism. Also, the spacing between the equal sign and the uh, ID is a bit strange. I don't know why I did that. 
and close div. And inside this, we'll have all the other elements that will be included on this website. This video is quite long, so let's skip ahead. Let's go to when elements start appearing on the screen. Author of discipline equals Is that P tag? Okay, what's good here is I'm using syntactic, syntactically meaningful tags. I'm using the H1 tag, for example, it means heading one. I'm using a P tag, which means paragraph. So that's a good sign. It's good, especially if you want to rank highly on Google, which I ideally use the tags that have meaning because um, they can identify which part to show on Google. You know? So in this case, they show the H1 tag in, in the Google search results. So it has an additional benefit as well using meaningful HTML tags. I don't like that. Okay, let's just do former Navy SEAL. That's cool. And the um, So we have the title, the subtitle, and now we want to insert an image. So we're going to create a new div. Div ID equals. What is the name of the div of the ID? So image div. Okay. Close the div. Um, so we're gonna insert. So off the bat, you can you can make the image tag self-closing. So there's no need to add another image tag. You can just add the slash and then the um, right arrow sign. There's no need to use the closing image tag. An image. So we do image CRC equals and then the link so we look at the images Jocko Willink is not the most handsome guy in the world but he's just an absolute beast but I guess that's what you get for being in a war for for being a commander for like 10 years or whatever he's also a Brazilian so ideally you don't want to use IDs for identifying elements or applying styling to elements ideally you want to use classes because you can have multiple classes but you can't have multiple IDs and you can't have IDs on multiple elements, the same ID on the multiple elements. For example, I can't have title on another element, let's say. But with classes, it's a lot more flexible. So it's always recommended to use classes over IDs for styling. It's a black belt. Oh, I'm still a white belt. Okay. I've been a white belt for like two years. But I don't really train much. Let's forward it a little bit. Nowadays. Okay, so we have the image. Image at CRC equals the link of the image. I don't know why I'm adding. I'm going to do a quick description two IDs. of what the image is. Why am I adding two IDs? That makes no sense. So use a out and then a description of it. We'll do just drop a link, I guess. There you go. That's it. And then close the image. Okay, let's forward it a bit more because it's kind of repetitive. In here, so we'll do um, a href equals and then the link to his page, and then we're going to for more information. Yeah, that's correct. Further, that's correct. So target equals underscore blank, it will open the link on. A new page rather than opening it on your current page it's a really cool thing to know about anchor tags let's forward it a little bit something a bit more interesting so body text align center there you go so put everything in the middle so it looks a lot better um the title looks a bit i don't really like the title so let's change the font so font family so ideally, when you style elements using CSS, you want to select it via class. You can see here, I'm selecting it via tag. So I have the body tag, the H1 tag. Ideally, you want to select everything by classes. Um, as I mentioned before, they're a lot more flexible and use a lot more um, opportunities to use them, let's say. Um, so always use classes rather than IDs. Use all the P tag 
piece to be a bit interesting. Maybe I should have given this a H2 tag instead because that way I can really play it. I'm not sure why I'm adding these like spaces like beneath each selector. So I have H1, have the opening curly brace bracket, then I have a space. I'm not sure why I'm doing that. That doesn't make any sense. If you add space, additional spaces, you're making the file size larger, which is going to decrease performance. So we want to try and include as less space as we can in our CSS. A bit more easily. Yeah. Okay. H2. Let's change that to some color, some interesting color, like dark green. Dark green is appropriate. Okay, let's just voila, dark. Oh, yeah, hex. Let's find the hex. Uh, yeah, so I need for color, you need a hex code. Um, there are color names you can use also, but I'm not sure dark green is one of them. So I did use a hex code for a dark green. Let's fold it a bit more. Um, Okay, we'll leave it, we'll leave it like this for now. But let's see what else they said we should do. So it's centered, should have responsive resize relative to the width of his parent without exceeding his... Ah, I remember this. Okay, I don't really know how to do this. I completely forgot. But I know there's um, this thing you can do called media query and it kind of changes the screen size according to the um, type of this device you're using so if you go to where is it um, web design principles and you go to make an image responsive you can do so I'm not correct when I say it adjusts the screen size it adjusts elements based or you can just adjust styling based on screen size that that's the correct terminology for example I can change the color based on how big the screen is. For example, if I have a mobile, I can change, make the title blue, but on desktop, I can make it red. I can adjust the styling based on the screen size. This. So we can do this. So the max, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so we can just copy and paste this. So here's the image. There it is, so we can stick that in here, take away the image thing, like that. Okay, that kind of messed it up. <laughs> um, I suppose this place is a block, yeah. So we'll leave it like that. But now it will fit 100% uh, of its size into um, the width of its container. Okay, so its container is like all of this, I'm assuming. That's what I'm assuming. That's not correct. So uh, max width is telling the image to only be as big as its size. So let's say I upload an image that is 100 pixels or 200 pixels, let's say. It will only be as big as 200 pixels. That's what max width is telling the image. So let's see it's... No, it's fine. Okay, cool. So that's fine. Um, I guess that's all I have to say for today. Hopefully it'll be useful. I'm sorry if, it, if what I did was a bit confusing or even you know, didn't make any sense to anyone, but I'm just beginning in this journey and soon I'll get it, soon I'll get it. I'm just learning every day, I'm coding every day, so one day I'll get it. Um, hopefully this was useful to someone. Like if I was a relative, if I was a complete beginner, maybe this this could would encourage me to start, hopefully. Um, because I can see that someone as retarded as myself can do it. So <laughs> means anyone can do it. So hopefully this was useful to you guys. So I have to say for today, peace. I really like the ending part when I talk about, you know, is this, I don't know if this, help, I don't know if this video is helpful or I'm not sure if it's useful and, you know, I'm not very smart, so don't listen to what I have to say. And if I could do it, anyone could do it. If I look at the comments now, it's, this is what, five years ago? So now, look at the comments. It's all, thank you, 
thank you so much, thank you. So I obviously helped a lot of people. It's like 100, 151 comments of thank you, thank you, pretty much. And it has 54,000 views. So you did a good job, young Hassan. You did a very good job in helping other people. And you're not as retarded as you think. So that's all I have for this video. That's me reacting to myself coding five, six years ago.